In this video, I'm going to talk about the transform plane groups. The transform plane groups are a way that we can pattern a transform plane. For example, if we have the same features on four different sides of the part, four different corners of the part, um, top and right side or whatever, this is a way to program that feature once with a transform plane and then have it rotate around the zero of the, par the part zero as many times as we want and around whichever axes we want. So the first example I have here is I just used a transform plane. First of all, I made the top center of this part my zero point. And then I'm, I've done one transform plane to the bottom right corner, and I put uh, just a circle there on a compound angle to take that corner off. Now, if I wanted to repeat this around the, the part three more times, I could just do three more transform planes, or I can use what we call the transform plane groups. So if I look at this program, you see that I have a rotary position that we always start our program with, our transform plane to the bottom right corner, milled the circle, transform plane end. So I'm going to, before the transform plane, just like patterns, we're going to put whatever pattern, transform plane group or whatever, before the first block we want to pattern, and then we're going to put a pattern end, or in this case, a transform plane groups end after the end of what we want. So before the transform plane, I'm going to insert rotary transform plane groups. Now we can group these and move them in a linear axis. Uh, we can use transform plane locations, group locations, or what we're going to do is we're going to rotate. Now I want to rotate. I want four of these, including the original. So I'm going to put four. I'm going to rotate around the Z in this case, and I'm going to do it every 90 degrees. Once I've done that, I'll go to the end of the program or after the transform plane end of the transform plane that I want to group, and I'll insert a rotary transform plane groups, transform plane grouped end. And when I go to draw this, you'll see that we're going to have it on all four corners of the part. Now, in this case, I knew I was going to use a transform plane group, so I put my zero point in the center. We're always going to rotate around the last active transform plane. So let me show you why that's important. If I switch to my next program, where I have that same transform plane compound angle on the corner, you can see that my zero point now is down here in the bottom left corner of the top side. So when I go to rotate this, we're always going to rotate around the last active origin point before the transform plane that we are trans or grouping. So if I were to just throw in a transform plane group here, so before the transform plane group, insert a group, rotate four times around Z every 90 degrees. And I go to the transform plane end, and after that I insert my group end. You'll see that we did get the rotation. It is going around the zero point every 90 degrees just like we anticipated. However, it's always going to rotate around the last known zero point. So if you're going to use transform plane groups, I recommend that you think about that ahead of time and you plan your part reference point around that. But if it's an afterthought, we can fix that. So what I can do here is before the transform plane group, I'm going to insert a transform plane that is going to take me to the center of the part. So I'm in the front left corner of the top side. So to go to the center, I would be three and three to move to that center point. And then after the group end, I'm going to put a transform plane end. Because I'm using this transform plane and this transform plane end to move my zero point over to the center of the part. Now when I draw this, you'll see that we're getting the 
behavior that we wanted. We are rotating every 90 degrees around the center of the part, but our locations aren't in the right spot. And the reason is because this transpo transform plane, I'm sorry, this transform plane was active before we called the next transform plane. This second one will be from or stacked on top of the active one prior to it. We're able to stack transform planes. So since we're going from the center of the part and not the bottom left corner of the top side, these numbers change. I'm only going to be 2.5 from the center minus 2.5 in Y from the center. And I'm still going to drop down the same negative 0.5 in Z and my rotations are the same. Since I did the circle around 0, 0, that won't change. So now if I draw this, you'll see that we're getting exactly what we anticipated. So it's important to know that you're always going to rotate around the last active origin point before you call the transform plane that you're going to group. We are able to stack transform planes. We can have as many transform planes stacked as we want. Each one will come from the previous one. And for every transform plane, you have to have a transform plane end. So in my example, I've got a transform plane here, transform plane end, transform plane group, transform plane group end. And then my original transform plane, which I want to stay active all through the program, or at least through all of these groups, has a transform plane end as well. So if you have those out of order, or if you're missing one, you will get an error. It'll tell you so. But just remember, transform plane, every one has an end, and we're always going to group rotate, group linear, group whatever, from the last known origin point or the last active origin point, whether that's our original part zero or a transform plane.